What's up, Pocket Dudes? Welcome to Pokemon Go to the Movies, the Pokemon film podcast run by us here at Gigaboots.com. I'm your host, Dan Video Games, and with me is Bob. Anybody want my dictionary? Chris Wolfhard. It's weird, Char is just in this movie. Dr. Agro. Let it rip. And Millennium Mike's very own, Shiba Yagato. Man, if he stops saying that, you don't know what those words mean. Stop that. Cock! Cock! <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Wood call someone a cock. And that, I think that's beautiful. <laughs> May's like, it learned its first word from you, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> But this time we watched Pokemon Ranger in the Temple of the Sea, or as it's known in Japan, Pocket Monsters Advanced Generation the Movie, colon, Pokemon Ranger and the Prince of the Sea, colon, Manaphy. <laughs> really did that second colon in there. <laughs> For people who are unfamiliar with this podcast, what we're going to do is run through a quick plot synopsis, giving each of our musings as I travel us through the film via the mouth sounds. At the end, we will give it some scores based on the whimsy. How good the Pokedex representation is. The gun check. Don't ask about that until we get to that segment. MVP and a bunch of other stuff. So stick around for that. Let's get through this monster of an hour and 45 minute Pokemon movie. We open on a photo mosaic of the earth that is formed from Pokemon pictures, kind of. That's the idea. <laughs> it is not, though. It's kind of more like they put a transparency of Pokemon really tiny over the earth. The intro narration talks about how there are so many Pokemon that counting them is like trying to count the grains of sand. The intro is pretty neat stylistically and animation wise. I think it's pretty neat in a high budget. I, I was just thinking about how the Pokemon are grains of sand eventually in Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, like they're a sand Pokemon, not on a long enough timeline. All life is ground to meaningless dust. <laughs> no. Not that. I don't know. The only way we can confirm that is by climbing into the paradox machine. And even then, it's debatable <laughs> online what that meant. We get some fairly high budget shots. Very interesting looking. You know, neat little things like Rayquaza being chained up in taste. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, where's yeah, that fucking why? movie? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> They're just like, Pokemon torture. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Fuck you, you green noodle. We're going to have a space program. <laughs> <laughs> we just go, this is for Destiny Deoxys, bitch. We're from that city. Saiyans are really upset, okay? <laughs> yeah, like, just freezes standing in front of it as being electrocuted. <laughs> Trunks is like, I swear he was going to land here. <laughs> 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 the narration explains that there are those who take advantage of a Pokemon's trust to further their own selfish ambitions, but there are those who exist called Pokemon Rangers whose job is to protect Pokemon. So it's okay that we showed the tasing cuz you know, they're going to put out a forest fire. That's, you know, these are equal <laughs> levels of threats. I like the Pichu being the Matoi Mochi. Yes. Where they're they're like the from the Edo era fire squads are the cheerleader. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's adorable. Bro thinks he's on the team, as I put in the Discord. <laughs> Everyone else is shooting water. It's just like I'm here for support. <laughs> the intro narration ends and the camera cuts into the water. Under the water in deep in the ocean, there are so many underwater Pokemon. And this weird amoeba looking thing. It's sort of bouncing around, and all these Pokemon just start bouncing it higher and higher, and then the amoeba comes up slightly to the surface, where a CG pilot in a CG helicopter looks absolutely <laughs> terrible and just stares down at it and goes, yeah, that's a thing. We're going to do that thing. Yeah, it's CG people that close in an anime. What are you doing? You uh, thought the CG yeah. people in the last movie were bad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> At least those were crowd shots. Right? <laughs> At least those were crowd shots from a distance and yeah. not just, you know, a dude from a low-budget summer blockbuster that Gerard Butler probably starred in mm -hmm. just going, you know, we've secured the package. Uh, over. <laughs> where's, where's a good place to put the camera relative to my terrible modder? Uh, on my shoulder? Okay, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Is it the lawnmower man? Yes. <laughs> has, has the horrible CG? Yes. <laughs> As it looks at the amoeba, the amoeba goes back under the water, and we, too, follow it under. At which point, there's some crazy drill sub being piloted by pirates with a sort of Team Aqua-esque logo. Right? Yeah. I was like, that is close enough to file a trademark violation, I feel like. It's just, it's well, so similar. 
Exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> That's piracy. It's called stealing for a reason. I'm glad that we're back to the villains having like giant cobra bases. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I I did miss what the Iron Marauder. Yes. The Iron Mask Marauder. The cool thing here, though, is that these pirates, by having this logo, show that not only are they pirates and thus morally bankrupt, they're also creatively bankrupt. (laughs) (laughs) A device comes out of the sub and it grabs the amoeba. The head pirate says, there are two types of men in this world. Those who have unlimited desires and those who do not. And Mm. I, I don't know why he thought this was a cool thing to say. This will continue happening. Dan, your pirate voice is better than his. <laughs> well, yeah, it's the fucking uh, <laughs> guy from Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> you better start believing in Pokemon <laughs> movies. <laughs> 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 the head pirate walks into a chamber where the egg is now. By the way, this amoeba is an egg, we find out later. And it is inside a canister. And as he looks for it, he goes, wait for me, my sea crown. A crew member with blonde hair grabs the canister and starts to run. Then the movie, like, has a bunch of 2D animation that looks pretty good. And I feel like that chopper guy really set me up to be impressed by basic animation. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) His voice is so funny. He's, like, really playing up, like, the super spy shit with Mm -hmm. his performance. Yes. Yeah. This blonde dude. old radio serial drama Uh hero. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Jack Walker. He's so cool and competent. He's not Jack Reacher. He's Jack Walker. Isn't that cool? cool We gave him a legally distinct name. I like how they do him. (laughs) What feels like it's almost certainly verbatim a Lupin action sequence. Yes, it does have those vibes. Yes, it does have that energy a lot. I also very like it. He's like, I'm not a traitor because I was never on your side in the first place, (laughs) which is subscribing to the Char Estimable School of Loyalty. (laughs) God, doesn't this just make you want to buy and play a Pokemon Ranger game? Yes, it did actually. For a begin- bit at the beginning here. I didn't need this movie to buy Pokemon Ranger. Hell, I'm looking at my copy on my shelf right now going, I should play more Pokemon Ranger and break my DS again. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 an intense game. So there's this sequence. The one uh, Chris was just talking about, the Char-like quote fl- flying out of this dude's mouth, uh, where this man, whose name we learn in 10 seconds is Jack Walker, rides up handrails that are some sort of conveyor system on the wall. And when they try to chase him up through the gap in the wall to the next floor up, he kicks in the handrail next to it so it crushes anyone who comes up there. That was really smart. I was actually impressed by that move. I'm like, damn, that's a really clever tactic. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, why would you build a submarine like that? And then I remembered the outside and how this is the most sonar visible object ever piloted by mankind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's pretty much par for the course. Right. <laughs> but yeah, seeing the animation of the dudes getting stuck on it, like you can feel the skin scraping. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> their, their spine is being ruined by this kicked in rail. Uh, he he escapes away from them for a moment to call to his home base and he informs them that he's named the thing the EOP and they go EOP and he goes egg of the prince and they go you can't make up names what are you doing he's annoyed that he didn't get a nicer greeting from the lady on the phone he said she should smile more anyways he explains <laughs> he's been scrubbing floors on the on the sub for a month undercover and that he wishes she was a little bit nicer about it and the lady at HQ goes She'll be nice after their work is done and that there's a lot still left to do. Are you man enough, Jack, to do it? And this triggers like Zab Brannigan mode in his brain. So he just (laughs) replies, I don't know the meaning of failure. And the lady offers him a dictionary so he can look it up while he's getting jumped by pirates. He like has a little bit of Dorito face bad touch senpai going, but just a little. (laughs) That's not not a good thing to have any of, right? (laughs) Action breaks out in the with Jack in the kitchen and he flees away to the surface of the sub. Up on top, the captain summons his Pokemon and tells Jack to give it up. Jack says he doesn't know the meaning of giving up. The captain offers him his dictionary, and the best part, the intonation of this line implies the captain knew this was a follow-up joke. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, Well, he he was obviously listening to the radio. I I hope so. I hope he's not psychic. He has enough powers in this movie. Jack says, keep it, and then leaps what appears to be 20 feet into the air 
to land higher up on the sub. Yeah, Pokemon Rangers seemingly have like shonen protagonists. I did a lot of squats so I can jump 40 feet in the air powers. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Very strict regimen over there at Ranger HQ, I suppose. He pulls out some weird device that summons an electrical hoop that he then uses to lasso a mantine, and he goes, ah, I captured a mantine, and rides yeah, it off. Let's be very clear. It's a Beyblade. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker pulls out a Beyblade. <laughs> um, remote control Beyblade, which is cooler. Hmm. I, I feel a little weird about them getting these devices that seemingly mind control Pokemon. Well, Bob, this is just another Pokemon movie that's maybe delving into the topic of is it morally correct to capture Pokemon if you don't use officially branded merch to do it? You have to use <laughs> well, a normal Pokeball. According to official Pokemon canon, it makes a trail of beams that transmits friendship to the wild Pokemon. Jack is friends to everyone. <laughs> and and also see and also I think um I think the Pokemon can just go, no, fuck you. Die. <laughs> I would have loved if that happened to Jack in this film. <laughs> it should have happened at least once. It should have. Yeah, from what I remember of the games themselves, they allow you to like get a Pokemon to do a couple things for you, and then the Pokemon can just fuck off whenever. So it's not quite as bad <laughs> as it appears at first glance. So it, it it's charm, not dominate person. <laughs> uh, I actually bought the Pokemon Ranger game for the DS because I'm like, I need Manaphy. Manaphy is important. And then I never played it. <laughs> so maybe now with the knowledge of this movie, I have enough motivation to go through it. Anyway, he escapes on the Mantee. Pinsor gets fucking pissed and shoots a beam at it. Mantee's yeah, yeah. like, oh yeah, you want to start some shit? Flips back, does the free willy shop over the top of them. And uses confuse ray, confusing everyone. And crew member goes, that was Mantine's confuse ray. That works great. <laughs> <laughs> I really God. thought that pincer was just going to throw a temper tantrum. I didn't think he was going to shoot a beam. It like, felt like even that. even directed at Jack? Yeah. Just sort of everywhere? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pincer has had enough. So all their Pokemon are stunned as Jack swims away with Mantine while having an oxygenation filter in his mouth that's like almost paper thin. And then we cut to the fancy intro sequence with molecular graphics and seascape and a bunch of CG that I feel like each shot in this is sort of reused later, but without the 2D background. It's just all the CG effects that would go on top of it. And we get our title card. Yeah, I like that the opening this time was more like a James Bond movie than I feel like it's ever been before. Just, yeah. Just like, here's our cool opening action sequence. And then Jack re and then Jack Walker blows up the Russians and escapes on a <laughs> snowboard. Uh, this is okay. Brace yourself, audience. We have to talk about it. This is where we get introduced to the new U.S. voice cast. We we cut to our main crew just walking on a white background on an extremely hot day, and the, uh, it, uh, Brock's the worst. It's bad. I can't. Yeah, yeah, Brock is the worst. Brock Brock's is, is really so bad. offensive. It's. Fucked up. I haven't been so deflated since I had to deal with the Chad changeover in Bleach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like Brock gets better through this movie, but these first few lines are just shocking. <laughs> I, I think the one I hate most is Max. Because yeah. he just sounds like the nerd emoji in my head. <laughs> oh, they did lean way too into that. They made him like so much yeah. more stereotypical than he should be. Well, actually, ooh. I have to go play my Dungeons and Dragons, man. <laughs> but they are completely lost in a, as the narrator calls it, veritable wasteland, which I don't know. I think he's overselling it. I can see some plant life and other things, but I'm not going to worry about it. After I get over the shock of the voice cast changing, our main crew realizes they're running out of water. Max is like, I just want a little bit. And he drinks one, maybe two drops from this canteen and May explodes at him. But then suddenly they notice bubbles of water floating in the distance. They run up to see what it is and they realize it's some weird circus act where a lady is orchestrating water Pokemon jumping between bubbles in midair. This might be, to me, the weirdest thing for people to just be doing in the Pokemon world that we've seen in a movie. It's kind of cool, at least. It is neat. I think the, the Politoed is doing the bubbles. Like, that's the Politoed's job, uh, to keep those bubbles up in the air. Yes. He seemed like he was 
more moral support. He's me. like creating the water in a shot later, and then uh, Metacham and Metatite are levitating it. And, you know, Max says, uh, actually, they're using psychic because that's <laughs> how he sounds now. <laughs> yeah. It's it's okay because Gorobus hears him, and then immediately its instincts are kill. Scare and child. Gorobus almost does it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Max is like, can I have some water? And the lady's like, sure. So he pokes his mouth. He pokes with his finger one of the bubbles to see that. I don't know that it won't explode on him and drown him. I don't. Anyway, and then he sticks his lips in to drink from the bubble and a Gorbis swims up and freaks him out. It's pretty funny. There's also a shot here where they form a Pikachu out of water. Oh, God, that Pikachu is horrifying. I'm going to have <laughs> nightmares about the CG water Pikachu. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> Bob's sleep paralysis demon is a CG water <laughs> Pikachu. <laughs> Look, my sleep paralysis demon is the CG man who we saw from behind his shoulder in the copter. His Pikachu is nothing compared to that. And the, the worst part is he just hangs out in the periphery of your vision. He's like just 90 <laughs> degrees to the left of you, so you can only see him in enough to know he's there anyways yeah that's actually horrifying (laughs) brock notices a new victim he (laughs) he has all of her data in his blue book he says your name is elizabeth and you're a part of the marina underwater pokemon show you're on the tippy top of my all-time all-stars list can i shake your hands and go on a date with you and max drags him off by his ear and with new bro like old Brock, Eric Stewart Brock, like had the energy of whatever, he's a, a stupid horny, however fucking old he's supposed to be, like 15, I fucking don't know. <laughs> this new Brock is just a danger. <laughs> this new Brock isn't allowed into clubs. Every bouncer has new Brock like on a list and is like, no. <laughs> I, I also hate that now that little blue book of his has become a recurring thing. Oh, yeah, that shocked mm-hmm. the shit out of me. I thought that was a one movie trick. I, I did not expect, of all things, that to come back. And now I, I hope that before Max disappears from Pokemon canon forever, he takes the book and tosses it in. Oh, that would be so good. I need it so bad. The last quote third gen movie is him throwing it in a fire over the credit sequence <laughs> oh yeah and then you have like the happy 2007 pop song playing while brock is just sitting there writhing in agony <laughs> like like his horcrux has been destroyed yes <laughs> <laughs> jesus elizabeth no e at the beginnings family all walks up may meets them all and then compliments the mom by saying she looks like she could be elizabeth's sister and the mom's like haha Go on, dear, and slaps her so hard she hits the ground and goes, no, seriously, go on, dear. I love this. There's a transition shot. This is like, this is the first in this movie, and I feel like when it occurs later, it has more whimsy, but this is like audience ADD candy, where there's a transition shot with a clown and a line of whoopers walking up and down a polytoad, and it's just like, look at this thing. Look at this thing. And then I clapped because it's whooper and polytoad. Yes. Yep. I was like, oh, this is neat. I hope this isn't preying on my ADD. <laughs> <laughs> they had 110 minutes to fill. I don't know what. I don't know why they gave them that much time, <laughs> but they sure did. We want to animate some more Pokemon, okay? This is important. You could cut 30 minutes out of this movie and lose none of that. I yeah, know. for real. I know. I know this movie. This is the movie out of all of them we've seen so far that I think could be cut down the most, right? Like 30 minutes could be gone easily and it would be the same. The main cast and the family are hanging out in an RV, drinking water, having fun. And they're hanging out with Bweasel, who crawls up to a compartment above them and starts messing with a canister that has the amoeba egg from the intro. May is mastified, staring at it. I really enjoy how well this Bweasel's animated. But it also freaks me out a little bit seeing him like move around like a normal animal. What? <laughs> like what is that? it's an otter. I I know, but in the, all the games, I I'm so used to him just like st- standing upright, t posing almost. <laughs> Whereas mm. this is like no, he is very much a creature. I mm. mean, that's fair. At the same time, he's like the new Gen Four Mon that's not a legendary of this movie. So you got to just have him being cute and doing otter things. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's Which Gen 4. Great. That explains it. <laughs> that explains why there's so much focus. Yeah, he's he's like one of the preview Pokemon of this movie because Bonsley and Lucario were for the last one and then Munchlax and uh, mm-hmm. 
who the, who the fuck else was Roger, in Roger. Magic City <laughs> Deoxys? I think it was just Munchlax, actually. May is disassociating, staring at the egg. Ash is hearing about their show they run, this family circus. And says, don't, your sh- don't pause meeting, please, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> what? I didn't say or do anything. I was describing the family as a family circus. Is there I something you're thinking about? I have been sitting here not making Kaleido Star jokes like an upright citizen, <laughs> and you're just going to drop that shit. Ash says their show sounds really cool, and this activates the grandfather stand who <laughs> says, Oh, would you like a sample? Then we'll just have to show you. And a montage begins. It's a musical sequence. If this was the four kids group, it would be an Eric Stewart song. <laughs> and we'd be all be clapping, right? Yes, absolutely. If uh, they play Blitzball. Yes. <laughs> yeah, my brain also screamed Blitzball the moment they jumped into costumes and started swimming in it. Yeah. But uh, now I'm curious because I know the last movie had it as well. If this was still a four kids production, we would be getting the current anime op from when this movie came out and i need somebody to cut that now because i need to know what that would look like <laughs> yeah so we, we get production credits a bunch of stuff uh it's revealed in this montage team rocket is just following the main cast on a gyrocopter even through the desert as they're dying of thirst i guess were they just waiting for every one of the main cast to just die and then to pick up Pikachu? <laughs> That's such a good plan. Honestly, it's one of the smartest they've had in these movies. Path of negative resistance. <laughs> like, Jesus, this is this is simple. This is a goal. Anyway, we just described they're playing Blitzball in front of crowds in the middle of cities and stuff, and everyone's delighted. And Team Rocket's in the crowd just being like, hey, what's, what's going on? It's really weird to watch Team Rocket basically be tourists for a bit. It's a little strange, but they look up in the newspaper and they're like, oh, oh, look at this. Apparently, uh, words. <laughs> this <laughs> newspaper has the plot in it. The montage ends, though. Buizel <laughs> brings out the device with the amoeba inside and Team Rocket catches a glance at the amoeba canister from a rooftop. The family offers the main cast a ride to the next town while Team Rocket, sitting on a nearby fountain, as I was talking about, are like, hey, we can totally knock out this entire family to this pirate crew in order to get money, maybe? <laughs> the family is like, okay, yeah, we're leaving town. Someone someone even looked at the canister. We have to go. And Team Rocket's like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. And they hang up the phone where they were calling in this tip to this narc line in order to pursue the family. At night, Buizel exposes the amoeba canister to the moon, which then causes it to subsume a sleeping May into its fantasy dimension stand? Yeah, Buizel really is obsessed with his canister for the first half of the film. It's weird. He wants to well, eat yeah, it. Yeah, it's the, the prince of the season, son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And he's an anarchist. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It, so it was at this moment Subtle in the details. movie that I had the horrible realization that, oh, it's just May's turn uh-huh. to get a baby legendary from yes. circus folk, one yeah. of whom may not be who they seem. <laughs> <laughs> well, her brother got it before. It's her turn now. And- yeah, the, te- the team over there realized, oh, shit, we got to write them out soon. Uh, we need her to have her moment in a movie. So let's do that again. Yeah, it's kind of crazy that May had basically no involvement in the other movies she's in. <laughs> this is the first time we get any sort of focus well, on her. I don't know. She played well, that well, really important role in the Jirachi movie of flipping over an ornamental star like six <laughs> times. Yeah, she had the important role of telling us, all right, it's been five minutes on the road. Now another 24 hours in time has passed. <laughs> yeah, so well, now, well, well, now they need... Some a character that has mommy powers. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, they have, have to bring in the one character. <laughs> Shinzo Abe walked up to the Pokemon company and said, "Hey, <laughs> folks, you know what you need more of? Family. Yeah, not enough family. parents. <laughs> make make them appreciate having kids. Do it. And the entire movie, it's palpable, and I'm uncomfortable the entire way through. Shinzo Abe was just standing outside their offices with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> not even. He was just standing there. <laughs> I think that was enough, is that he he's, was, like, over their shoulders like the CG dude in the copter. He's like one of those statues in a Zelda game where his eye just travels around him at, like, a statue. And the moment anyone's not, like, putting messages that are pro-family and pro-procreating, he just shoots them with a laser. Like, someone on the staff just gets vaporized. 
Anyway, May's in this underwater fantasy dimension where she's swimming along with all these underwater Pokemon, and Manaphy flies up to her, and then away to a mystery city that's underwater. It cuts to daytime, and May yells, Don't go! <laughs> Elizabeth <laughs> asks if she's okay. She's like, ah, oh, yeah, it's just a dream. We then cut to the family in the main cast setting up a table riverside to eat some food as May tells them about her dream. They explain that they're ancestors of the people of the water. We're almost at that part. I have to I have to bite my tongue a little bit longer. Okay. <clears throat> Team Rocket is going to steal the egg and upon touching it gets lit up with red light which makes them switch bodies. Now Meowth is Jesse, James is Meowth and Jesse is James. This is a pretty funny sequence, in my opinion. They're walking alongside the mountain the main cast is now, explaining that the people of the water still see the sea temple in their dreams. And then Brock says, a memory written straight into your DNA? That's just awesome. And apparently he's like the biggest <laughs> Assassin's Creed fan in the world. <laughs> They come up on Team Rocket, who's trying to do their spiel, but they're all in the wrong bodies. And they start freaking out. And they're like, we just had James' body say, and I'm Meowth, that's right, while doing cat hands. It's pretty good. Then they're like, okay, whatever. We got this. Let's go. And they leave with the amoeba egg. I love that J James runs away like a cat because yes. he's got Meowth in him. Because they <laughs> jump off of the building, the RV. Uh, when they land, James's James's body, which is Meowth, is the only one that guts down on all fours and crawls for a second. <laughs> it's really good. Jesse is struggling to keep up with the other two while running in Meowth's body because of the lower land speed. And then they leap into a gyrocopter and take off. Ash is about to just eviscerate them, but then the clown goes, hey, <laughs> they have something important we can't attack. And he pulls out the device from the intro to capture a nearby Fiero. It's clearly Jack Reacher. The Firo and, I guess, Pikachu teams up with it to ride off and retrieve the egg. Team Rocket just freaks out because in their world, they were in the clear already. <laughs> <laughs> they start screaming. No one can remember who's who. <laughs> Pikachu nabs the canister and jumps off. Firo just pops the balloon their, like, gyrocopter has, and then they fly off screaming. Die. <laughs> you see it wasn't it's not complete mind control because the Firo clearly still wanted blood yes yeah like you don't hire a Firo unless you want to end up with bodies yeah F Firo <laughs> is one of the most aggressive bird Pokemon they have ever made still so that bitch will kill <laughs> Jack Walker introduces himself to the cast, unveiling that he was, in fact, the clown the whole time. And he asked to be called Jackie, at which point I start to dislike him. He explains that the amoeba is the egg of the Pokemon Manaphy. May realizes that that's the Pokemon she saw in her dream while Jack explains his mission is to make sure it hatches and to deliver it to the Sea Temple. As they're traveling, pirates start Coming up on choppers and summon bee drills to attack them. I'm like, this is practically a nightmare I have every day. <laughs> like, this team rules. I want yeah. this team in a game. Holy shit. Yeah, it seems almost unfair that the freaking pirates have choppers to attack on land as well. Yeah, no, that's messed up. <laughs> By the way, I love bee drill as a design, but the first time I imagined bee drill swarming like this, I just went, no, I'd, I'd rather leave the world without Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it, it's it's pretty harsh. That's fair, but also bee drill is such an underutilized Gen 1 Pokemon that genuinely is really cool because stingers for hand is a really awesome choice. <laughs> it is. So I just watched this happen and I went, fuck yeah, respecting bee drill. You love to see it. <laughs> this team is pretty fucking metal, and so is Beedrill. It's a perfect match. The captain of the pirates say, uh, he does this thing where he says, there are two types of people in this world. Those who are chased and those who do their chasing. He likes to chase. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. I was, I was having a little bit of trouble <laughs> keeping it together during that scene. Just a I little. I had to pause for a minute. I, I had to pause and just put my head in my hands and uh, wonder how my life got to this point. It's a good thing Nintendo took over the dub, made it a lot more, you know, st the straight and narrow. <laughs> <laughs> the pirates then run after the main cast. A Jack pretends to have the egg and starts running away, but the pirate captain catches up, realizes it's not the real egg, and Jack tosses a ball at his face which then bounces off of the rock wall and pegs him, even though he thought he escaped it. 
<laughs> everyone laughs at how much of a loser this guy is. Uh, he's had enough of this shit, though. So he just like gets pissed, picks up a giant rock that Jack was standing on and then tosses it. This dude is buff. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually scared. I'm like, he could take most Pokemon, I think. Like, with this level of strength, I think he could just easily floss on every Machop. Like, the whole line. <laughs> yeah, I think in terms of the movie villains we've had so far, he's the most, if you took my Pokemon away, I could still beat your ass <laughs> yes. contender of any of them. Like, not even the dude from the Celebi movie would stand a chance if this man decided to punch him in the face. Right, he would oh, just toss oh yeah. the Iron Mask Marauder off a cliff. <laughs> yes! I don't even think this dude uses Pokemon. I, you know, <laughs> well, I think the pincer was his. Oh, I think yes, the pincer yes, was specifically true. his. He doesn't need to, though. That's, <laughs> right? that's for certain. There's lots of Pokemon battling between the rest of the pirates and the main cast. Ash Touch, who apparently had the egg the whole time, tosses it to May, who's trying to run away with it. But then there's a struggle with the pirate king and the egg pops out of its jar and then May catches it. And then Manaphy hatches and Manaphy starts crying. The king pirate is destroyed by this emotionally, and he says, I was going to use my own two hands to hatch Manaphy. <laughs> I was hoping this would just be the end of him as a villain. Really? I think it would be <laughs> hilarious. Be like, All I wanted was to hatch this baby. Oh, I just wanted a child. <laughs> All I wanted to know were the joys of having a family. <laughs> I have so much love to give. <laughs> then he, looks, he looks off camera, and on the set is Shinzo Abe giving them the thumbs up. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Jack takes this moment to throw the pirate captain and his ally off of the cliff. <laughs> Inside the RV, the main cast starts on their escape route. May successfully gets Manaphy to stop crying and go to sleep. And the mother of the family goes, hey, I can take over, you know, cradle Manaphy. That way you can get some, you can get I'm some rest. I'm suffering empty right nest syndrome really, really badly. I need to hold this child. Please, it looks so squishy. I just want to squeeze it a little. Hand me this child. <laughs> they explain, uh, well, they try to do that, but then Manaphy gets really upset. And they explain that Pokemon, they, they say broadly, Pokemon all have instant imprinting and assume whoever is there when they hatch is their mother. May takes Manaphy back and it calms down. So about the pirates being the most competent enemy team, the choppers close in on the RV driving a hook <laughs> shot into the top of it. The whole crew's like, oh, that's, that's, that's bad. Let's walk to the vehicle that's towing the RV. And then this sequence is weirdly calm almost of them just stepping out of one moving vehicle into the front one. And then they just detach it, and the RV drags a chopper down into the cliff, and it explodes. This is a hell of a sequence. <laughs> just from an angle of, they, they're really casual about this. No one seems to be overly panicking. Well, they had they can't panic too much, because May is holding the baby. Oh, that's true. They don't want to upset Manaphy. That's right. That's what really matters. Anyways, they escape to the front vehicle. RV falls down. Chopper gets dragged down with it. It's very cool. They successfully escape. Elsewhere, Team Rocket wakes up on a dilapidated building, remembering being each other, but thinking it was possibly a bad dream. Mime Jr. and Wabufet call their attention to the entire rest of the movie heading right their way. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse... You know, the good thing about Team Rocket, the thing that's always served them, is never once for a moment thinking, there's no way, look at the situation, we have zero chance early on. This is too early in the movie for that thought to occur to them. So Jesse just goes, hey, Meow's right. We shouldn't settle for a reward. We should get the whole damn treasure. <laughs> James is still like, well, we can just get the reward. I, I narked. I'm sure they'll give us something nice. As they think about this. The main cast travels into the dilapidated using using weird charms to light up sigils on the wall, which they then unlock like it's a, a locker room lock <laughs> by turning the outer ring and doing a thing. And then the wall gives way to a passageway as they make their way deeper into the ruins. The old man asks if they have any water type Pokemon. The pirates arrive at the scene and also get down into the ruins using similar but very broken looking trinkets that let them see the sigils. As they make their way down, the pirates determine that the family must be descendants of the people of the water. We cut to the entire cast surfing away from this, uh, whatever, an underground sewer of sorts in this ruin. Manaphy is having a lot of fun. No one is using Manaphy to surf. Obviously, it's a baby. 
They don't be mean. Yeah, they find a room with murals on the ceiling and walls, kind of kind of stained glass looking, but it's got to be painted on, right? I don't know. Oh, God. Now this is the part where I have to remember how to say this. They talk about, yeah, sure enough, the sea temple is called Samaya, and inside is the sea crown. People of the water set traps within the temple to protect it from normal people, and they even say it is invisible to mortals. It travels the water and only appears at the total eclipse of the moon. Manaphy have a homing instinct that allows them to find the temple at any time, though. That's why everyone wants Manaphy. Jack Penis says that's why they have to protect Manaphy from the Phantom... Sorry, from Phantom the Pirate, which is that captain's name. Hell yeah. <laughs> His, he needs to look more ghostly to have a name like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, we never see it. It's never covered in any Pokemon media ever. But like 10 years before the series started, Pokemon had a really big crypto boom. So there's just all these lunatics who are billionaires. <laughs> <laughs> like that was the guy with the flying fortress who shot the, the, the PlayStation oh, symbols at the legendary bird. Mm -hmm. Just a world full of those guys. It was NFPs, non-fungible Porygons. <laughs> uh, this was when they were still a hot commodity. And then they became just your average Pokemon who was common as shit. And they all went, uh, later, suckers, you bought out my stocks. Let's go. You thought the ID number meant something? Idiot. <laughs> Outside the ruins, Team Rocket is sucking up by cleaning the chopper. And they're like, hey, fan of the pirate, we let your men, we narked. So um, can we have, a, like, can we be cool friends? And then fan of the pirate goes, yeah, give them the reward, whatever. And they're like, no, 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 no. We're better than that. We can clean. And he's like, how good can you clean? And they go, absolutely dirty. <laughs> I don't, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> fan of the pirate is going to follow the main cast and his choppers. Team Rocket gets really enthusiastic about the treasure, which kind of sets up some red flags with the crew aside from fan of the pirate. And even Chita is just like, look at these assholes. I'm a kill. <laughs> they start to act innocent by cleaning the chopper faster and harder. Our main crew is now on boats riding through the cave. I'm trying to remember gondola. Is that the correct word? It kind of looks like a gondola. Jack explains his job is to be a Pokemon Ranger. And this job is for him. That, that is why he is on this mission. And the rest of the crew maybe shouldn't be uh, talking about the main cast, not the family. They finally land on a rocky shore. Manaphy is in a baby basket and hard asleep. A boat drives up and it is completely CG. And the grandfather of this family explains that, yeah, I had a ship. That, that crew's just bringing it back to me. And I'm like, is this a bat signal situation? How do they? <laughs> this is crazy. I just have this boat circling the globe like an empty UPS airplane in case I need it. <laughs> <laughs> They decide that the main cast should stay. You know, this really is a matter for the family and uh, the, the cool Pokemon Ranger, Jack Reacher. And uh, so they leave. And as they start sailing off on this boat that the grandfather has, the crew that brought the boat is sad and misses him and wants to go. And they can't go either. And our main cast starts to wave. But Manaphy, realizing it's no longer being held by May, starts sobbing. It gets really, really sad. The grandfather's old crew explains to May and Ash that, you know, being young means never turning adventure down. So they're like, oh, you're right. And they sort of start running after the boat. And then Manaphy uses the red light to switch the bodies of Jack and Ash, which is intense and insane. And I don't know. And then and Ash is inside of Jack's body and is like, Manaphy, did you do this? And Jack, inside of Ash's body, is just really chill given what just happened. He's like, yeah, whatever. Hey, what's up, Pikachu? You're cute. <laughs> we cut to them all being on the boat now and then they explain yeah that's Manaphy's ability heart swap we have no idea what's going to happen if you get too far apart <laughs> <laughs> is it like it's a defense mechanism like does that work yeah, I just I, 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 I get ready for this not to come up later <laughs> <laughs> And then I timestamped this because this dialogue was so crazy. I had to replay it to make sure I wasn't having a stroke. <laughs> Elizabeth, who is staring into the middle distance. <laughs> Keep in mind, Manaphy has been here the whole time. It has been possibly a whole day she's been traveling with the hatched Manaphy. It is unclear, but she's staring into the middle distance and goes, Hey, that's the prince of the sea. 
And May says, who's the prince of the sea? And the grandpa goes, that's what they call Manaphy. And I write in my notes, is Elizabeth okay? (laughs) (laughs) This isn't a, hey, you know what they call Manaphy? This is a, I'm disassociating and barely recognize the forms in front of me. Yeah, I feel like this has to be a weird thing with the new translation team, just not understanding how this conversation was supposed to happen. Yeah. Considering the Team Rocket cleaning thing already, there's probably a couple things that just slipped through the cracks as far as just being weird. Even outside of like really weird moments like this one, you can tell the tone of the writing, especially for Team Rocket jokes and a bunch of other things has shifted enough where this seems much more literal translation, Mm -hmm. like word for word almost. Yeah. Which makes sense because if I'm not mistaken, this is the exact moment that Nintendo just gets the rights for the anime back from four kids. So they're handling this in house and they're like, okay, don't do what they did and get all creative. (laughs) <laughs> don't make it funny that'd be bad <laughs> you can't punch up a script and this just made me think wow imagine if halfway through mondo cool someone like toei wrestled the rights back from funimation and every <laughs> script and stopped getting revised even at oh, all no. oh no oh. oh jesus i definitely don't think it's that because there's a lot of little lines that seem like they were probably not in the japanese version you think yeah possibly i think it's probably just we don't fucking know how to do this yet because <laughs> <laughs> Like, everybody's just doing an imitation of the four kids actor. It's weird. It's like really, really early Funimation Dragon Ball where everybody's still imitating the ocean dub. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. May asks if Manaphy swapped Jack and Ash's body so that way May wouldn't leave. Manaphy yells an affirmative mana mana. May says that makes her happy. Then Manaphy says, happy, happy. Everyone loses it over Manaphy learning its first word. Max is like, hey, say my name. And then it says Mana or Mata. And then Max goes, yeah, that's my name. And everyone's like, no, it isn't. <laughs> they let Manaphy go into the ocean because it needs to choose its own path from now on. A whimsical underwater sequence occurs as they go into a canopy of sorts in this boat that lets them observe the sea life and Manaphy being all under the sea. Okay, this is the moment. Hmm. This was the breaking point for me. Okay. Did anyone else get incredibly strong vibes from this entire movie that was like, oh, it's it's Nadia. <laughs> I've never seen Nadia, so no. Yeah, I've never seen it either, unfortunately. I didn't in the moment, but the moment you said it, <laughs> retroactively, it's happening. Yeah, they have this weird sub ship that's very fancy. The main, oh, man. like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Elizabeth is very similar like nadia is also a circus performer if, if you combine team rocket and the phantom pirates th- th- they would be the bad guys from nadia oh shit yeah, yeah. Th- this seems is really likely uh, uh I, also i i just looked it up the people who did the anime after four kids was tag productions who already did the scripts on the four kids shit so it's literally the exact same script, people. That's so weird huh. because this has clunkier writing than any of the other movies. Right. So so here's seemingly what happened. Nintendo was like, Pokemon's not as successful anymore. We need to cut costs on how the money on the anime. We need to cut costs. Then four kids contract expired. And then their partners, TAG Productions, is like, we're going to bid more than them. And just snaked it out from under them instantly. And they were like, we're cutting costs. Replace everybody with sound likes. Oh, damn. Yeah, I think the original Pokemon cast is like four kids staple. Like they have a contract yeah. with four kids, so they couldn't even come over since it was no longer a four. According kids. to Veronica Taylor and Eric Stewart, it was explicitly a cost thing. Hmm. Yeah, that was not a good move. I've never seen Nadia, so I just assumed this was based on the Wes Anderson film The Life Aquatic with Steve Sizzo. Um <laughs> and I was waiting for the slur any moment. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> That hit me like a truck. I only saw that movie last year. (laughs) Anyway, so, you know, they're under the water. Lots of magical moments happening. Lots of sea life. Manaphy slams its head into the glass of the observing room. And May says, hey, stop crying. It doesn't hurt. (laughs) What a good mom. The power of suggestion. (laughs) That's what you do to small kids. That's not real pain. (laughs) Like when they look at you like, "Uh oh, I did a thing. No, you're fine. You're good. And then they are. That night they see the moon and they know a lunar eclipse is coming soon. 
And then we cut to a sequence where Jack Walker is like parasailing along with the boat while also calling it to HQ. And they're like, hey, save the vacation for after the job is done. Ha 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 ha. Then they're giant waylords. And then Jack gives a look that looks very sus. And I don't know why he does this multiple times in this film. I, I don't. I feel like we're not supposed to trust Jack. Yeah. The, there are a number of scenes that just end with Jack giving a look. Where he's just like, hmm. Hmm. The combination of like half of the Jack scenes and his VA seeming almost patronizing 90% of the time because of weird direction. Well, well that's what happens when you have to hang out with a bunch of children. <laughs> He's just a dick. He's not. He's not insidious. He's just an asshole. And he's like, uh, I, I, I got to pretend to be nice to these kids. Uh oh. Uh oh. I, I mean, yeah, but for a Pokemon sidekick in mm -hmm. a movie, yeah, it, these vibes just are not it. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime he's on screen, I'm just like, get this fucker out of here. <laughs> they really needed to sell him as being cool, so you'd buy that fucking game. Yeah, uh -huh. that's what they're trying to do. I mean, him capturing the Pokemon is cool, so they kind of succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, his Japanese voice actor is uh, Koichi Yamadera, who is fucking Spike Spiegel, yeah. which I think God is very funny. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what a downgrade. Yeah, that God, would have been nice. you imagine Bloom doing this? <laughs> oh, I would have popped off. I'm a Pokemon ranger. Why oh, is that? Shit. I almost froze to death. Whoa! <laughs> Where am I, where'd my pants go? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's exactly what happened to Jack. Uh, he became a Pokemon Ranger because one time he was going through a blizzard and almost froze him to death. But then a bunch of Pokemon found him and cuddled him and he said they were like a bunch of warm bottles of water. Which is, I guess, an accurate way to describe a thing that would keep you from freezing to death, but it sure is weird to refer to a living organism as warm bottle of water. He was about the same age as Ash when that happened. And Ash is like, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> I was like, how old are you, Ash? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Ash goes to say something and then you just hear it all turn to static for a second. <laughs> Ash goes to mouth it. There's no audio. There's a staticky grain filter. And then Ash lifts up the gun and shoots him. <laughs> <laughs> all of this while smiling <laughs> holy shit ash gets excited by the story and he pretends to be a ranger by yelling that he's a ranger too and jumps into the water to swim along with manaphy and love disc they they sure love swimming and underwater pokemon it's so whimsical over here that night manaphy learns more of the human language which is terrifying <laughs> it now knows how to say love you Manaphy is now riding Lapras. Lapras is a cool Pokemon. Brock can cook, unlike Elizabeth. Her mother wishes Brock would teach Elizabeth how to cook. Ha 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 ha. Jack and Ash are having a separate conversation elsewhere about Manaphy and May. Jack is worried that Manaphy won't leave May. He explains Manaphy needs to become the prince of all, <laughs> all the Sea Temple Pokemon. And May, <laughs> hearing this, comes to the room and says, I didn't think of that. <laughs> Let's be clear on how we've we've gotten here. Uh huh. Manaphy needs to choose his own path. Mm -hmm. But fuck you, Manaphy needs to not stay with you because you suck and girls yes. are yucky. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why do the temple Pokemon need a prince? That's ever made clear. Look, th that's how the world was made by our Lord Arceus. All right. You <laughs> oh, have okay. those who rule, those who fight, and those who farm. <laughs> Manaphy is sad that May runs off and starts jumping at the edge of the ship, screaming happy love you over and over. This is a nightmare. <laughs> this is a horror movie is what this is. Yeah. For the third Pokemon movie in a row, we've shifted genres entirely. May's like that broken down thing. in a hallway sobbing as this yeah. happens. Yeah, because there's a Pokemon just screaming happy love you. I would also be shitting myself on the floor. It's like you chucked a Furby off a pier and it's screaming as it dies. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, behind this ship and a bunch of ugly fish Pokemon and lantern and rocks, there's the sick underwater drill sub from the intro. While cleaning this sub, Team Rocket smugly talks about how they're going to get that treasure. And it's like, man, you know that, that thing people talk about where every American assumes they'll be rich someday? <laughs> <laughs> Team Rocket is the distillation of that in this moment. They're like, haha, then we'll be the oppressors. <laughs> oh, God. 
on a rock, Manaphy starts singing. It's droning and sad, and it continues this weird horror movie sound of this, this part of this movie. May walks into the observatory deck to watch. The water Pokemon all gather around Manaphy's droning song, and May says, Prince of the Sea. Elizabeth <laughs> uh, gives May a mark of the people of the water some shit. <laughs> That's the end of that scene. The boat lands at an island. The eclipse is tonight. Ash brings Manaphy food. Who is looking for May? He preys on Manaphy and the audience's ADD by summoning all of his Pokemon for yet another whimsical sequence of Pokemon playing. May, May watches from the boat. No fun <laughs> for May. And her bandana flies away in the wind. She seems like she noticed but wasn't destroyed by this moment, so it's not that important to her, I guess. Sharpedo accidentally snags in, runs off, pulling it deep into the ocean. Then an ugly brown fish Pokemon that I've forgotten the name of grabs it off of Sharpedo, and Manaphy, who went after this bandana, is now completely lost looking for it. Does anyone on this podcast remember the name of this ugly ass fish? Does it have like the camo pattern, but it's all beige? It's all beige and it almost looks like it has a skull head, if I remember correctly. Like it's got like it's got real fossil vibes, in my opinion. It might be relicanth, but <sighs> yeah, I, don't I think really it's I think, think it's relicanth. It's a skull head. Hold on. Yeah, I think relicanth's right. Yeah, relicanth. Yeah, that would be a fossil. Okay. So. Yeah, there you go. The boat has a small sub inside, which blew my fucking mind. <laughs> and they're just like, it's okay. We'll just take off in this in order to find Manaphy, who's gone missing and is sad probably somewhere. So let's go into this smaller sub inside of her boat. And I swear to God, this is based on the aquatic life of Steve Zizzo. Anyways, Drill Sub starts closing in on Manaphy, who lost the bandana. This is a tense moment. Now notices it on a cloister. And upon seeing it, Manaphy grabs it. The good guy sub closes in on Manaphy, and there's a bunch of CG water Pokemon. May starts freaking out. Manaphy brings her the bandana, though, and she's like, oh, okay, good. Manaphy didn't, you know, disappear because I didn't show it love. It is, in fact, getting my bandana for me. That's very nice. Then a Riptide hits them, and it disconnects the cable from the boat. Everyone's freaking out, and Manaphy's like, what? Just go this way. So they're like, okay, follow Manaphy. So they they swim against the riptide a little bit to the right, and then they slide straight into the Sea Temple, or Sambaya, or if I'm not mistaken, the Temple of the Sea, as the title of this movie calls it. I, I just would like one name. Can I get one name? That's not nearly fantastic enough, Dan. I'm sorry. <laughs> they should have given it three more names then. <laughs> Can we call it the Water Temple? No, that's not allowed. All right. <laughs> yeah, and here's your hot fish boyfriend, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> the Sea Temple is beautiful. It's in a bubble of air under the sea and has streams of LED gamer lighting all over it. <laughs> the cast is in awe at its beauty. They enter and walk around the inner chamber. Manaphy sings... Once they reach an inner sanctum, Manaphy sings to the wall, and there's a deep, rumbling voice that sings a duet with Manaphy. I would be shitting my pants. Yeah. <laughs> what, Horror movie. What ancient evil has Manaphy awakened? Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Or not. <laughs> what if we didn't, though? Uh, anyway. The duet continues and concludes. A waterfall separates, and the main cast is allowed to travel even deeper into the sea temple. Phantom the pirate finds his way to the sea temple and loses it over. Oh my god, there's going to be the sea crown in here. That's so great. And he runs off. Team Rocket rolls out of a canister attached to the sub he traveled in on. I'm shocked they had enough air to survive. <laughs> this thing is like torpedo size. Jack has decided he's going to swim all the way to the sea temple. Like Mega Man.exe, he jacks into a mantine. And he starts swimming down there using his oxygenation filter. <laughs> Did the Vantine have a USB port? Yeah, you couldn't see it. It <laughs> yeah. was on its neck. <laughs> Manaphy swims upstream and leads the cast to a weird slab. Phantom the pirate catches up instantly. He's so fast. When, when we cut away from him, he's running at full sprint. Tells the entire main cast if they attack him. They stand no chance. Brock just buys it and does nothing. Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, this dude can lift a boulder. 
So maybe he meant hands, like not a Pokemon battle. He was like, I'm just going to beat you all to death. You oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ash has shown he has no qualms with just hitting people with Pokemon moves. And tackling anything ever. <laughs> right? I This like, felt so crazy. Phantom the Pirate could be a semi and he would still tackle him. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they just basically go, okay, we believe you. He, uh, Phantom the Pirate, that is, translates the slab, uses the mark of the people of the water, and then turns on some light sigil dials and messes with them and opens a secret chamber. No one does anything to stop any of this, including Manaphy, who could switch some bodies at some point, but we're not going to worry about it. Manaphy's a baby. It doesn't know the consequences of Phantom's actions. <laughs> That's true. It was just communing with some ancient evil this movie won't address. <laughs> uh... Phantom the Pirate runs deeper into the temple. Back at the boat, the mother and the grandfather and the father watch the moon as it's becoming a total eclipse. Uh, yeah, I was pretty surprised. The rest of the family doesn't seem to like show any interest in trying to get into the temple. Yeah. None. Which is kind of insane because they brought up how much they wanted to see it earlier. And it's literally a temple made for and by their descendants and the but yeah but like they wanted to see it but they also know what horrible eldritch evil lies beneath and they're not dumb enough to go in well at least someone in this movie knows <laughs> they're not like the uh white people <laughs> i want to see atlantis if somebody's like do you want to ride inside an underwater death coffin to get to that thing down they'd be like no <laughs> <laughs> jack doesn't make it to the sea temple in time it starts to fade away at its innermost chamber resides a bubble full of glowing crystals. Phantom the Pirate says, unfortunately says, there are two types of men in this world. Those who look good with jewels and those who do not. Something, something, something. I'm so tired of this lie. <laughs> Phantom grabs one of the crystal shards and then all the water starts to disappear in the bubble around it. Uh, water starts pouring in one of the random holes in the wall and Phantom the Pirate basically doesn't notice or care. That's just irrelevant to him, I guess. He's just, you know, leagues under the water. <laughs> yes. Why would he care if the, you know, air bubble keeping him alive starts getting pierced? And it shows the outside of the sea temple, and that is literally what's happening. Parts of the bubble are letting water pour in. The main cast leaves as Phantom is grabbing more and more crystals from the sea crown, which is what that thing is. Jackie runs into them, and upon being informed of what Phantom is doing, he tells them to leave and that he'll solve it himself. Then Jack does a cool, and he starts shoving in crystals super fast while running past Phantom over and over and over. And it's, uh, the sequence is actually pretty lame. <laughs> It becomes like a bad platformer boss where it's like you got to put the crystals back in the holes while the boss tries to pull the crystals back out of the hole. My brain was like, imagine the world's worst knockoff of a Three Stooges bit <laughs> where it's like this isn't fun kinetically to watch. It's just one guy running around the other. I was more like surprised at how lucky he was that those crystals, it does not matter where he puts them as long as they're oh, yeah, back they're, in the statue. They're yeah, they go in every <laughs> hole. Put that shit on the box, huh? Well, they're probably all shaped identically. <laughs> That's right, the square hole. <laughs> That's right, the square hole. As Jack continues to shove all of the crystals in rapidly, Phantom getting uh, duped over and over and over again. Phantom grabs one of the crystals and leaps into the water. I really love his, okay, if I can't have 20, I'll take one. <laughs> <laughs> However, it escapes him by dumping into the water and flowing through a small hole. Phantom is very sad about this. Elsewhere may look sad. Manaphy sees that something is wrong, leaps into the water in the shrine and starts swimming back in. Ash and May chase after the Manaphy and as water pours in, the sub is rocked and use whimsical music plays. <laughs> Manaphy finds the crystals lying on the ground next to the crown. Ash and May start shoving them in. They realize they're one short. Phantom only now notices that the place is sinking, which is impressive amounts of not noticing shit. Team Rocket tries to take off in his sub, but he forces them out, which is a really good sequence because, you know, they have that thing what? on the top of submarines where they lower it in turn. He uh -huh. just grabs the lid and yanks it so hard they all fly out. <laughs> right? yeah. like they're, they're about to murder him by leaving him here to die. They know it. You can see it on Jesse's face, followed quickly by the terror as this beast grips that hatch and wrenches it back open holy shit it's really good 
I was so invested, like, who fucking is this guy? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like if you just dropped a Marvel villain into the Pokemon universe. <laughs> I want to see him wrestle Reggie Gigas in the next movie. <laughs> Oh, that would be so good. It's a perfectly even match. <laughs> May and Ash are trying to escape the flooding with Manaphy. They eventually run into the crystal and they run off with it, but then st stumble into the Phantom's canister. Ash gets May to get inside this canister with Manaphy and Pikachu. He seals it behind them. He takes off with the crystal and runs through the flooded temple. He tries to swim down to put the crystal in, but can't. He drops the crystal. So he pulls out one of his water Pokemon, right? No. No, he no. doesn't. So he, it's he, a good thing he brought Manaphy, Prince of the Sea, with him instead of leaving him <laughs> sealed in the tube, right? Prince of the Sea who can breathe underwater and who this temple is dedicated to who could probably help him solve this uh, ten times as quickly. So contrary to what my co-host said, which would make perfect sense, he grabs, a, he gulps a big, big old gulp of air and then goes back down again and passes out. <laughs> <laughs> and then his core fish eats him. <laughs> <laughs> he passes out after wrestling the crystal out of the crack it was stuck in. And as he does that and just conks out, oh man, Manaphy carries May and Pikachu's thoughts to Ash. So he's jolted to life by their <laughs> prayers. I was sure. Absolutely sure. Man, if he was transferring the soul of Pikachu into Ash's body so he could do this. <laughs> <laughs> he succeeds and slams the crystal in, causing the temple to light up again. Golden rope-like tentacles come out of the wall. It's perfectly fine. Everything's safe. And rocks the temple around. It carries the canister through the temple with its tentacles as it drains all the excess water. On the sub, Max... Elizabeth, Jack, and Brock all witness the sea Pokemon swimming to the sea temple, including Kyle Ogre. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> favorite legendary. I couldn't believe he showed up. I lost my shit. <laughs> and they're real and not fake. <laughs> <laughs> He's smaller than I thought, though, you know? I mean, it's so crazy. They had so many basic Pokemon, and then a legendary is like, I'm an underwater Pokemon, too. And I'm like, I know, dude, but damn. Even I kneel to Manaphy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a weird pecking order. I don't understand that. It's funny how e even in Gen 3, the one I prefer, no, nah, we need a shitty magma copy because this guy got laughed at at a, at a fucking <laughs> board at meeting. His penis. <laughs> and then Kyogre, no, he's just here because, you know, Manaphy's the, the cool new guy. So I got to fucking, you know, be the <laughs> be the cameo. Yeah, yeah. Cool ass cameo by Kyle Ogre, who's just way too powerful to be in this movie, frankly, but whatever. He could solo Phantom. I, I'm pretty confident in that. Fan Phantom is good on land, but in the sea, no. That man is dead. <laughs> the temple surfaces and the bubble is dropped. It's beautiful and floating on the water. It looks great. I, I looked at it and I was like, oh, this reminds me of Klonoa and a bunch of PS1 era games. I wish we had an environment this cool in modern gaming. <laughs> it's so yeah, gorgeous. I sure thought that exact same fucking thing. <laughs> May realizes Ash accomplished his goal, but then worries that he didn't make it. Phantom takes this moment of concern as an opportunity to steal Manaphy by popping up out of the water and grabbing him and riding off on his tube. It's just some Jason Voorhees <laughs> shit. I love this man. <laughs> Then the movie takes a turn that I wouldn't believe if you even told me. Right? Yeah, I was fucking, I was like, what? Huh? <laughs> Up till now, I was like, this feels like a B-tier direct-to-DVD Disney movie with where it's going uh -huh. and some of the shit it's pulling. And then it just turns into, I don't fucking know. Ash using the power of the golden rope tentacle to become a DBC character and fly after Phantom the Pirate. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when he starts going full Goku and he's like all living things die Phantom the Pirate <laughs> yeah and Phantom seems really fucking unimpressed with this kid who has obtained the power of the universe <laughs> right? he's, he's, he's like fuck you kid you aren't special <laughs> yeah so he is a lot like Thanos he just sees this ludicrous power and he's like mm, I can take it <laughs> I'm good I got this <laughs> 
The family just calmly explains that Ash is the wearer of the sea crown and now he is king of the sea. <laughs> and you thought the aura shit was bad. Right. You people thought the aura shit was bad. I'm gonna think the, I'm gonna think the aura shit is how he ascended this power level, right? Oh. Every movie's just building him up. <laughs> Ash is starting to become Adol Kristen from East, yes, where he's the chosen no. one of multiple different religions, none of which have contact with each other. Oh my god! Like with Adol, he's just going to drop this and leave it forever. Like it's it's falling into the ocean. We're all really lucky <laughs> that Ash will never learn bump combat. <laughs> he's sticking with Pokemon, so we're safe. Isn't that the thing where he tackles everything? <laughs> it's <Yeah>. true. <laughs> It is very true, actually. Hmm. Yeah, they just explain he's ascended godhood, whatever. <laughs> Ash takes back Manaphy and flies back to the temple. All sorts of water Pokemon start bullying and pushing around Fan of the Pirate, who's shoved into the air by Kyle Ogre. Ash, as soon as he pops up, just grabs the Manaphy and flies because he's flying. He's the Saiyan now. Back to the temple. And Phantom boards his full-size sub and starts going back towards the temple as well. Waylords are like, uh, no, and just starts bumping the hell out of this. If I was on that sub, I would be shitting my pants. That is horrifying. Now, the Waylords <laughs> took a page out of Ash's book and learned bump combat as well. That's I think true. this is very neat. Yes, it's cool as hell. I'm like, yeah, you know what? That's that's a real threat. The sub, it has a, it has a good idea. It uses supersonic to confuse them all. I don't know of structures using Pokemon moves in Pokemon. So it's really weird to be like the sub use supersonic, but I guess all supersonic waves do that. I don't know. Anyway, Manaphy has had enough and it uses its red waves of power to recover all of the Pokemon from this confused state. It also does the droning song again and calls all the Pokemon to attack the sub. Fan of the pirate is assaulted by Mantine using bubble beam and then lanterns go into the generator room or something and explode it. They, I mean, their <laughs> service is appreciated, but oh man, they are dead. They are absolutely <laughs> dead. <laughs> their yeah. sacrifice will be remembered. Kyle Ogre blows up the sub with his giant beam and I'm like, you could have just done that. Right? <laughs> yeah, the other shit feels petty? Frivolous. Yeah. <laughs> And the pirate says, there are two types of men in this world. Those who are crushed and those who are not. As a giant pillar starts to try to crush him. And it's revealed because the explosion has blown off a lot of his clothes. That he had like a power suit on underneath his armor. Yeah, it's great. Like he's got this full yeah. pirate outfit, but he's got like at his elbows and knees, these servos just working overtime to try to lift up this pillar. Which is the moment I realized the plot of this movie is basically just another Aiko OVA. Yes. No, that's true. <laughs> He's Biko. Jack is Aiko. Manaphy is Seiko. Uh, it's true. He's man and machine. Power, power extreme. extreme. <laughs> With the power of the 80s dad mustache and part of a submarine attached to his chest. <laughs> yeah, no, he, uh, he gets completely crushed and Jack just calmly goes, I didn't take him for the time to take vitamins. Which... Doesn't make sense, but okay. He made a joke about vitamins earlier. He did. Yeah. But now we've revealed that he does not take vitamins. He has a power suit. And he's dead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jack has a book with like four one-liners he wrote up in the middle of the night. He has no other ones. They all suck, but people put up with his shit because he's one of their best agents. And it's so unfortunate. If things ever don't fit syntactically into his flow chart of comebacks, his fifth comeback is just fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that one on tap. Man, Jack literally did nothing. He sucks so bad. <laughs> But he's so cool. <laughs> and you really want to play that game now. His capture <laughs> device is so cool. He's not. Oh, no. So everything up to this point was insane enough, but now the entire family is flying with the golden power yes and yeah so is the yeah. main cast and i have so many questions how is this happening ash is sharing his godhood like it's the end of shazam with the entire family it was pretty cool when ash had the handful of sparkles and threw it into phantom the pirate and he exploded <laughs> 
Oh, man. More and more tentacles of pure golden energy reach out for the sea temple, forming ribbons around it. And Jack says, so that's the sea crown. And I went, oh, is that what that was? Okay, I guess. All right, sure. Why not? The whole cast watches the sea temple sink back into the ocean. HQ congratulates Jackie. May is sad until she sees Manaphy, who leaps out of the water to give her a big old hug. And May goes, you won't forget me, will you? And Manaphy says, love you, May. <laughs> May goes, goodbye, I love you. And she goes, love you, mama. Love you, May. So about Furby vibes. <laughs> <laughs> hate that hate it so much i j the way that it's framed like at sunset with this really dramatic shot i just you couldn't try forcing this any harder <laughs> yeah it sucks. It's, it's a lot to deal with. Manaphy leaps back into the ocean. Everyone says they're going to miss Manaphy. Max asks May if she's all right, and everyone knows what's coming, but it, it happens anyway. She says, no, but I will be. Amazon recommends that I watch Nacho Libre now that I've finished watching this <laughs> film. <laughs> and, and the credit sequence is pretty phoned in. We get ripple background, uh, water, water, more water. In the credits, Jackie catches a Zapdos. What a fucking dick. What practical use does he have? What practical need does he have for a Zapdos? He couldn't take any other bird. What a dick. This is how he starts Team Instinct. <laughs> no, no, don't do that to Spark. Spark is cooler than this asshole. <laughs> Team Rocket is shown in darkness on water. They're like, oh, uh -huh. they seem confused as to where they are until they're blown out of a Waylord's blowhole. This credit sequence, overall, in my opinion, in this writer's opinion, sucks because it doesn't tie into the other movies and there isn't any insane, fascinating thing into it, inside of it, other than the ever-constant Marvel that is Jack totally sucks. <laughs> and that's it. That was Pokemon Ranger in the Temple of the Sea, which is the ninth Pokemon film. I feel like we could just call this Pokemon the Temple of the Sea. No. I don't think we need the Ranger in there. The Ranger is important. <laughs> Just like all the other ones are totally called Pokemon Trainer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to get to our ratings and stuff. But before we did that, hey, did you know you can get these a full month early? Uh, asterisk, asterisk. Sometimes it's a few weeks. Sometimes it's more than a month. Uh, that's true. You can go over to patreon.com slash GB podcast where you get access to over 40 or 70 or a million movie commentary tracks access to this a month early along with our other show chugging bleach where we watch all of bleach isn't that right bob that's right uh and you can also get access to a very cool exclusive movie called isolation 119 only available over at patreon.com slash gb podcast <sighs> well poke chums it's time we have to review this movie in the various scales that we work in. And this time, weirdly enough, because I keep shuffling the number and turn order around, I get to go first. If there is a movie that is more whimsical than this, I will be surprised. First category, whimsy meter. I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. I don't know how you can crank it higher. We have so many sequences of fun Pokemon playing and whimsical music. Even the scenes that should be tense have whimsical music playing like look manaphy swimming through the stream as the temple you know collapses but really it's the manaphy swimming through this beautiful environment let's listen to that it's non-stop with the underwater beautiful water type pokemon swimming loving swimming more yeah i'm gonna give it a 10 next up is shibuya what are you thinking i have to agree with you if if there's a movie that's more like artificially sugary sweet than this I think it's going to loop back around to not being whimsical because this one, at least half of it was just Manaphy swimming underwater with all these cool Pokemon. And it was like well animated and looked nice. And then Ash shares his King of the Sea power so we can get our obligatory not flying at swimming this time because they're in water tubes, you know, sequence. Mm -hmm. So it's a 10 for me as well. Bob, you're next. Yeah, the, absolutely. There's nothing more whimsical than this. <laughs> 10. Uh, Chris? <laughs> Yeah, this is, it, it's just whimsy, 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 whimsy. So I'm going to give it a 10. Aggro. I was really nervous coming into this one that uh, I'd have to lead off with the only 10. I'm really glad that I'm in good company on this one. <laughs> so unanimous. If you want a Pokemon movie that is whimsical, goddamn, do we have a film for you? <laughs> 
Well, that's going to move us on to the dex check, which means the most exhausting segment of any segment in Pokemon. <sighs> go to the movie. Good Let's luck. Let's go. Oh, right. You, you're <laughs> insane and read them all. Did you know Pikachu's in this movie? No way. Huh. Meowth, Wobbuffet, Mime Jude, your Don Finn, Swellow, Septile, Corfish, Apom, Fortress, Marsh Stomp, Bonsley, Combusk, and Munchlax, Squirtle, Eevee, Chitat, Pinsir, Parasect, Beedrill, Plusle, Swampert, Tyranitar, Crocodile, Mistrevis, Jigglypuff, Weasel, hell yeah, Weasel, Metatype, Metacham, Poliwag, Poliwhirl, Politoad, Gorbis, Goldeen, Sea King, Seal, Dugong, Wooper, Barboach, Whiskash, yes, Manaphy, <laughs> Kyogre, or, or Kyogre, if you, you just didn't know, Fero, Centret, Sharpedo, Horsey, Seedra, Kingdra, Krabby, Kingler, Relicant, Huntail, Wingle, Corsola, Whalemore, Whale Lord, Chincho, Lantern, Remoraid, Octillery, Quillfish, Clamperl, Love Disc, Mantike, Mantine, which until this movie, I, I assumed it was Mantine. Shows how stupid I am. Zazaril, Marill, Azamaril, <laughs> Shroomish, Rattata, Centrip, Furret, Swablu, Ataria, Dodrio, Zapdos, Lugia, and Rayquaza. Well, we have to rate this on our Pokedex Dex check entry, 1 to 10. How good is this coming in? We're going to start with Shibuya. I think that the fact that most of this movie's cast is, like, exclusively water types, it could have been a detriment, but I think the variety of them that they've chosen and the fact that we have, you know, the obligatory let's get the entirety of Ash's team out and the fact that Jackie over here captures a couple of, you know, non-water types, it's a decent balance and they gave Quillfish, like, two full minutes of screen time, which is nothing that I would have expected and I love it. I think it gets a seven from me. It's pretty solid, a little lacking, but that's the nature of the story. Okay. Yeah, I can see how it's pretty restricted by the subject matter here. Bob, where are you coming in at? I actually really like water Pokemon, but I was disappointed because it felt like all of those Pokemon are background characters. We don't have anything at the forefront, like, other than Manaphy. And Buizel. And Buizel, but Buizel even just leaves. Like, it feels like he's just gone after they got to the boat. left him on the shore. <laughs> He's just on the dock with the old guys. Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah. They're like, what the fuck is this Pokemon? I don't know this. But yeah, I'm going to actually end up rating this pretty low. I'm going to give it a five. It, it really didn't impress me with how much, how many Pokemon were on screen other than just sheer quantity. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chris, where are you coming in at? Yeah, I also feel like a five. Like, first of all, this is like the least Pokemon y Pokemon movie we've done yet from the context of. I don't think there's a Pokemon battle in this movie at all. Oh my god. Holy yeah. shit. It's just this weird Nadia villain showing up to throw boulders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the closest we get is like at the start with the pirates, and then he uses the Mantine to confuse them. Shit. Wow. Hey, Agro, what are you thinking? Yeah, that that is a, a big drawback in this movie is the lack of utilization, especially in some scenes where you have fucking water Pokemon <laughs> in the water Pokemon movie. Maybe use a water Pokemon in the water. Um, but <laughs> as should be said, like this is a very water Pokemon centric movie, and like the the lineup we've got, this is really the first time it felt like this was a natural ecosystem of Pokemon, and not here's a bunch of random Pokemon we crammed into the scene so we could up the count. And I really liked how natural that felt with just the varieties and where they were. We had a lot of top tier picks in good places, but because of the lack of utilization and Manaphy's just weak sauce, uh, I'm going to give this one an eight. Okay. Okay. Did anyone else feel like this whole movie was written with Misty in mind because it's so water focused? And there's like, but Mace here. <laughs> Not really, and I wouldn't wish what May has to do in this movie upon anyone in the Pokemon cast. Misty's frankly. been through so much. <laughs> no, Misty would not have sat for half of this shit. No. I, I think it would have called her mama and she would have tossed it overboard. <laughs> and honestly, more respect to her for that. Yeah. Yeah, I actually think of the water types they could have chosen at this point. 
they have some really solid picks. However, this is a Pokemon movie where, and this isn't meaning to cast shade, but if you ask me to recall what Pokemon were in this movie off the top of my head, I'm like, well, there's Manaphy. Um, <laughs> and Buizel. And I love Buizel a lot, but it is not enough to really carry and bring this up. And as has been mentioned by Agro, really, they aren't doing much for anyone else. It's just the Buizel show. <laughs> For the first half, <laughs> I'm going to have to give this a seven too. if they could have gotten more variety, if they could have better utilized them, if I could have another Pokemon that really shows up in like my top tier, like top, like A or B grade, right? Because for me, Buizel's it. Buizel's my fave in this movie. If we could get more up there, then this would be doing better. This might be the most farcical this next category has ever been. The gun check. <laughs> Hey, Bob, do you think this problem with pirates could be solved with a gun? Very easily, actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. You guys can't possibly stop me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they all pull their guns out, and right. he's like, oh. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I didn't think about a rogue d troop of kids traveling through a dystopic desert in a post-apocalypse might be carrying. <laughs> <laughs> I done fucked up. He he screams. There are two types of people in this world, and before he can start <laughs> listing them, there is a bullet between his eyes. Those full of bullets, and then they start firing. <laughs> uh, Chris, do you think this might be solved by a gun? Yeah, there's another version of this movie where Jack just pulls a gun in that intro scene, and yes! the movie stops. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if we wanted to make an actual James Bond intro, that's how it would have gone. He'd then blow up the sub on the way out. Right, exactly. It would be very, very 007 as he just shoots an yeah. air canister and they start exploding. The sub will be your tomb, Phantom, and he just blows him away. <laughs> Agro, what do you think? Uh, that... As Chris said, that opening scenario, like it reminded me so much of of Metal Gear Solid Two that I I envisioned Jack pulling out a SOCOM forty five with a suppressor and just cleaning out that room. <laughs> we we have seen that while he is a beast of a man, Phantom the Pirate is not impervious to damage, and unlike Biko Datakuji, he does not have a face mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, his face yeah. isn't armored. Get up close and end the problem. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree. This is this is a very solvable at multiple points throughout the movie with a gun. One of the strongest movies in that regard, I believe. Shibuya, what do you think? <laughs> I think that if Pokemon Rangers were allowed to carry, this would have been an assassination mission instead of an undercover <laughs> mission. And Jack would have gotten to do anything in the movie. And then we wouldn't have had to, you know, deal with the consequences of Ash becoming king of the sea. So, yeah, easily. The, yeah, he would have kept the overall power level of the Pokemon universe lower just by carrying. <laughs> yes. Fortunately, Ash is a force to be reckoned with. The next category is MVP, most valued Pokemon. Who is the star of this film for you? Who really brought it this time? Chris, you get to start the segment. Kyogre. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, Ship in the whoop. <laughs> like, you didn't need any others. He's just like, yeah, he, he took care of the fucking problem. Yeah. Manaphy, can you ask Kyogre to come over here and solve some fucking shit? <laughs> <laughs> that should have been the opening of the film. Now there's no film. <laughs> Agro, who's bringing it for you? Along very similar lines, I'm going to have to give this one to Firo. This is a mon who understood the assignment. <laughs> They're like, we have a problem. He's like, yo, I'll solve it. <laughs> and Pikachu's like, it's okay. We got him. Fira's like, my mission isn't done yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to give it to Buizel. Buizel's really great. You know, if Buizel didn't expose the egg to the moonlight to give May the vision, who knows how the rest of this movie would have gone. We have absolutely no idea. Would Manaphy just wander off with no emotional attachment to anyone? Would May have not cared to catch the egg? She would have been like, oh, look at it go. <laughs> Man, it bounces. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Buizel's really great in this film. My favorite 
Pokemon in it as well. And I think real corners. I think Buizel does more for that family on the day to day than Jack ever did. <laughs> but he played with whoopers and cloud makeup. No. <laughs> <laughs> Shibuya, who's your MVP? Now. There are a couple arguments that could be made for Pokemon that contributed to the film, but by the midpoint of the movie, I was a little bit uncomfortable at the, you know, isn't it great to be a mom may subplot? <laughs> and I was sort of drowning and zoning out. And then Ash sends all his Pokemon out to have fun with Manaphy and Corfish the king in yeah. his little pond going Corfu, Corfu, Corfu once again. Carrying my spirits, carrying this film. It's the little guy for me. I love him too much. <laughs> this is the mm. second movie you've nominated Corfish. That's so great. <laughs> and yeah. I love him. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be a shame when they get rid of him for the next one. Uh, <laughs> These movies oh. have me coming around on Corfish. I, I have become a believer. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you get it, Agro. <laughs> oh, I didn't know the next movie is just going to be like, goodbye, Pokemon we love. <laughs> well, here's the thing. If the, if the next movie is a Gen 4 one, like I'm thinking, like a proper Gen 4 one, then the parties are going to start changing, which means that I have to say goodbye. We'll have to watch May and Max and fade away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like back to the future. Let's just start fading. Oh, no. Bob, who's your MVP? Man, not a lot of Pokemon did anything in this movie. Especially after ones all of us just grabbed. Right. Uh, but I'm going to have to pick Chitat. Oh, Chita is really good. good. I was surprised that it was a Chitat in this film. Yeah, he hangs out with the pirate at all times and provides moral support. Like no one else. <laughs> Fan of the pirate, just like a kid with a DS bag in the day. He's like, hey, check this out. I taught him how to say fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what is he, Jack? He he puts the little designs on the ball that Chatot lives in. And so when he sends it out, it also just says fuck in the balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Fan of the Pirate is so much cooler than Jack, but they are on the same wavelength, though. So I see why you would think. <laughs> Well, now coming up next, our uh, world famous segment that everyone gets and understands the irony and layers of is Ash in a coma. And we're starting with Agro. Agro, is Ash in a coma this time? You know, I I was starting to think that this this wasn't an mm -hmm. Ash in a coma movie. And then I realized <laughs> all at once that this this clearly is Ash in a coma because he's basically having the same dream that he did before with Jirachi. It's just repeating, except somebody's left a Nadia Secret of Blue Water DVD playing <laughs> on loop in his room, which is sort of colored and rearranged some of the Jungian archetypes in there. This is definitely the, the echoing unconsciousness of a deeply unconscious boy. Yeah, I have to agree with Agro here. There's a lot of evidence for Ash being in a coma this time. Not only the things he was talking about, but also the general message that girls are just moms to be. <laughs> and various elements of that. And also at the end when he becomes a super saiyan. <laughs> I think this uh, this movie makes a pretty strong argument for coma dream. Uh, Shibuya, what, what do you think? It's not a fucking question. He's sharing a hospital room now. They've moved him because, you know, the family can't afford to pay for a solo room anymore. Oh, no. he's, he's sharing a room with an old man who just watches the news all day. And the news is two topics, declining birth rate and tsunamis. So his coma <laughs> brain has turned it into this nautical fantasy where he is able to become the king of the sea. And there's... There's no way this is real. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? Ash is like, I would go down there and I would solve the ocean. <laughs> Ash is like, if I was king of the sea, I could fix everything and also make people moms with water Pokemon. Um, this is what I'm into. <laughs> okay, Ash, maybe not so loud. <laughs> Uh, you know, you brought up that point earlier, Shibuya, that this had like a, an almost direct to DVD Disney vibe to it. And I, too, was yeah. really picking that up for a while. And then everyone turned Super Saiyan and it really shattered that. Um, Until he became Super Saiyan, I was getting big Aladdin and the King of Thieves vibes from yeah. this. Yeah, absolutely. This seems like a, a Little Mermaid sequel I never heard about. There already is one. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's great. It's her daughter who's who's a human who wants to be a mermaid, and then Ursula's sister is there, and she's been there the whole time. I was here the whole time. I was just standing slightly further back so you couldn't see me. Hey, Dan, I've got a bad idea for no, content God. with the Pokemon. Jesus! <laughs> I said it was a bad idea. 
hey dan here's this knife and i'm like what to do (laughs) (laughs) here's a gun it's on the table will anyone pick it up (laughs) hey bob hey is ash in a coma he flies around like a super saiyan yes (laughs) (laughs) there's no question this time I've never seen categories landslide like this. Chris, is Ash in a coma? <laughs> yes. Like oh if, you, if, if ever, if at the end when everybody was flying with the Super Saiyan powers, they had just been flying into like an ambiguous light. You could have like, okay, this is the last Pokemon thing. He did not wake up. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> the only way these categories could have landslid more is if we allowed all five of us to choose the same Pokemon and we all gave the dex check the same number. Jesus. Okay, well, Ash is definitely in a coma as far as this movie is concerned. Let's move on to the next category. Arceus X Machina. How big are the plot holes just so the movie ends on the status quo of the show? We're going to start this segment off with, oh, God, is it me? I think it's you, yeah. Oh, no, it's me again. Hmm, this is a 1 to 10 scale for people who don't remember. (sighs) You know, there's always the argument of... You know, I made the argument last time. It can't be that convenient because Ash now has the power of the aura. And I feel like that carried into this film a little bit for him to tap into this energy faster than anyone else. Is this a convenient conclusion? Are we back at the status quo? Sure. But the magic of the sea temple is very well established up front. And there is no ass pull to get us there. I do not believe. So I'm going to give this. I'm going to give this. A two. I might give it a one in the circumstance where it's like, just so we're clear, Ash, none of you can ever fly again. (laughs) That was a thing that only happens here. And it's like a PA system saying this in the temple. (laughs) Shibuya, what do you think? He is the king of the sea now. (laughs) He can go fucking Super Saiyan. This is way worse than the aura shit. Because the aura shit, you could argue, he had that in him the whole time. He just never knew and he never tapped into it. There's no arguing here. He unambiguously just has this power now and will never fucking use it unless, I don't know, maybe there's a Fioni movie where they remember that he did this. Uh, It's a one. This is not convenient. Okay. Bob. I feel like the power is entirely related to the temple. He can only use it it, when he stands near the temple. It seems to imply that to some extent. Right. So I feel like this doesn't really have major plot holes. (sighs) Yeah, I'm going to give it like a four. Like nothing here is too, too bad. Only thing that happens is that May does have some trauma from losing Manaphy. She'll get over it as she disappears. Yes. <laughs> as we just went over, she's probably about to disappear, so whatever. She's like, ah. Chris? Yeah, it, it's pretty low. I'm going to go with like 4-2 because it feels like there should be some addressing of Atlantis rising from the sea and everybody getting superpowers, but I, I guess we'll, I guess all they had to do is never talk about it again. They didn't reset <laughs> anything. They just did some crazy shit and just let it sit on the table. Brock and Ash are sitting around a campfire by themselves. It's just them and Pikachu. And Ash is just like, it's really too bad we had to get rid of Max and May. And Brock's like, they would have told people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, a- Ash, do you still have that fucking aura shit going on? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't come up. My fists solve most problems on their own. I imagine by being the king of the sea, it's a lot like, you know... Tears of the Kingdom swimming up a waterfall shit where just Ash could shoot up any waterfall if he wanted to. Aggro. Yeah, like all of the Magical City stuff seems pretty well self-contained on its own. I do feel like Phantom the Pirate, who is probably like just a little bit immortal, now has like, (laughs) even if he can't see it, now has the coordinates for the city. So I feel like in a couple of months, we should hear about him being the new king of the sea and <laughs> commanding Kyogre to lay waste to shorebound cities. But no, they <laughs> they they address that. They address that the sea moves with the tides, so it never stays in the same place. That's why That's, it's so impossible to find. He's got a submarine. He can track tidal maps. This is <laughs> this, this is unless there are waylords towing that city around. <laughs> So, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and give this one about a four. That seems right. Okay. 
Well, that brings us to our final segment, the rating we give the movie at the end. Now, for people who remember, this is technically a fourth gen movie because it has fourth gen mons in it. And that's how it works around here. We're very exact, except for that one time we weren't because it would be really insane to never review it on a one to 151 scale. So <laughs> that means we are giving it a number out of 493. And we're starting with Shibuya. Shibuya, how did this movie hit you? What score are you giving it today? Up until now, I think every Pokemon movie for me has felt like there was, like, soul behind it. Like, there was good intent there. And, like, even if it was riffing off of a Ghibli movie or a Lupin or whatever, it it just... The people making it had some enjoyment while they did it. The fact that this is a Pokemon Ranger movie... And that it felt kind of lifeless for most of it really didn't help it. The fact that Jackie's there the entire time and barely does shit except to show up and remind you that Pokemon Ranger is coming out on the Nintendo DS. (laughs) Not great. (laughs) I really didn't vibe with this movie. There were too many things that just did not work. And, you know, Ash going Super Saiyan was funny and all, but it doesn't really up my viewing experience of Mm -hmm. it at all so i'm probably gonna give it a 300 personally okay bob i actually enjoyed this a good bit Uh, i like the pirate villain a lot phantom's (laughs) a lot of fun we have some cool action sequences in here none of which have pokemon (laughs) like uh, (laughs) cool physical actions with human characters for some reason like even that that part of the ending where ash is running around the water temple not using his pokemon looks nice and it was exciting but yeah, it's not it's not a great Pokemon movie, but I did still like it a decent bit. So I'm going to give it like a 380. Chris. So I liked the beginning of this movie and I liked the climax of this movie, but we're falling into this really fucking weird area with these movies where it's like time for the 30 minute long heading to where the climax happens chunk of the movie <laughs> mm-hmm. wherein we will have the same conversations like four times yep. and guys there's a reason that every other anime movie is like an hour and 20 an hour and 10 you don't need to shoot for two hours holy shit <laughs> so i'm gonna score this pretty low i'm gonna give this a 243 okay uh dr acro yeah chris is right about that there there's a screaming hundred minute movie here stretched out over too much skeleton There's a lot of things in it that I really enjoyed, but it's structured like reading the Berserk manga as it came out. Everything's (laughs) going fine, and then we get on that boat. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm going to have to end up at like a 3.30 for this one. I'm not the hugest fan of this movie, but I don't dislike it as strongly as some of the other movies we've watched. I do think it is distended. I do think dealing with the new U.S. voice cast is jarring and kind of takes the fun out of it a little bit. It takes the wind out from underneath my wings here. I'm bummed out. And between all of those factors, I'm not having a great time with this film. I'm weirdly enough going to end up giving it the lowest score, but only barely by 240. And there we go. Those are the numbers we have said out loud that you have to do math to solve. As we have teased for many months now, however, we have to come up with a new ending catchphrase for Pokemon Go to the Movies, and everyone has to pitch one this episode. Because we'll catch your balls next time is just not good to put on a shirt. (laughs) We're going to go ahead and start with Shibuya Gato. Shibuya, pitch an ending catchphrase for the show. Well, I was trying to think of something that encapsulates all the movies, and I really couldn't come up with anything good, but it's it's in the oven. I'm still I'm still cooking that. For this episode, though, I think a good outro would probably just be something simple, something quick, something catchy. So what I've got for you is uh don't be a stranger, Rangers. <laughs> That's really ah. good. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Agro? <laughs> What's up, Agro? I just, this is an emotionally difficult project for me because I've really, I, I've gone through this whole arc where I, we'll, we'll catch your monster balls later has grown on me. <laughs> <laughs> me too, to be honest. 
And I really, I tried, guys. I tried to top it. But Dan, I, I think the organic development of that catchphrase <laughs> has captured my heart. So you're voting for the existing <laughs> one? I am, as it turns out. Yeah. We'll catch your monster balls next time. Okay, there we go. Chris. Uh, so I figure we can go with we don't care where you Pokemon go, but you can't Pokemon stay here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's really good. Okay, Bob. Mine's a little bit shilly. Okay. <laughs> R- remember, you can ma- reap the rewards of watching these early if you join our Patreon. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I took the coward move. I really just took my pre-existing catchphrase and made it distinctly rated G. We'll try to catch you all next time. Even though that's like an older evolution of the we'll catch your monster balls next time. <laughs> See, this is the coward's way out. I'm like, no, we need it to be okay. And Agro's like, no, you're not talking about their balls enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's the spice. <laughs> Is that where spice comes from? Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Don't check into it. Okay, great. Well, anyways, <laughs> these catchphrases are all interesting. You can vote on them via a link in the description. And we'll uh, catch your monster balls where next time where we don't care where you Pokemon go, but you can't stay here. So don't be a stranger ranger. You can reap the reward of watching these early (laughs) by joining our Patreon. The executive producers for this Gig Boots video are Esme, Ely Broyles, Spaceman Spiff, Redblaze27, Brendan O'Sullivan, a reminder for Symphony of War. Cooper Tank. Very Best Plot. Iconic Bane. And Rado. Thank you very much to our executive producers. And also these guys. If you want to become an executive producer or normal patron, head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today. <laughs>